Our first guest tonight is an Emmy-nominated actor, renowned woodworker, and New York Times bestselling author. His latest book, Where the Deer and the Antelope Play, The Pastoral Observations of One Ignorant American Who Loves to Walk Outside, is in paperback now. Please welcome back to the show our very good friend, Nick Offerman. Welcome back, old friend. Thank you. Thank you so much. I, uh, I am on strike as an actor. Yeah. So I will be comporting myself as an author. Yes. <laughs> You're giving off a very author vibe, but there was a moment where you betrayed actor. When I embraced you, mm? I often feel like when I embrace you, you feel like a piece of woodwork yourself. Well, thank you. Yeah. It doesn't, you do not have sort of weak author bones. I, I appreciate that, um, but... <laughs> The joke's on you because I was acting strong. Uh, <laughs> and that is allowed uh, during the current strike. You're allowed to act strong. Well, that it should have been between us. <laughs> oh, I see, I see. This it is, it uh... wasn't meant for public <laughs> consumption. You uh, clean shaven, uh, uh, Nick. I am. Uh, after 23 years, Megan Mullally and myself. Uh, Megan Mullally? Yes, very, very familiar with her. Hold for applause. <laughs> <laughs> Does she tell you uh, when you come on? And just remember to hold for applause. No, I've just learned. Uh, <laughs> I hope for all of you that you find a partner that when you say her name, people applaud like you, you won an Olympic event. <laughs> um, does anyone ever, uh, when you say uh, that you're married to her, does anyone ever yell out, how? Yeah, what? <laughs> you? I have a terrific personality, that's how. <laughs> uh, one word, girth. Um, <laughs> Girth, uh, girth, girth Frescura. He's our chef, and uh, <laughs> he keeps me trim. Uh, after 23 years, Megan Mullally said to me, "I've had enough of a mouthful of thistles." Yeah. When we're making sweet love, uh, and otherwise, um, other times than every Tuesday, and so, <laughs> and so, she asked me to be clean shaven, and I said. I, I will, I, I want to stay married to you, so I did, and I was pretty cool with it, except that when you shave your beard, if you have anything extra going on, if, yeah. you, if you have any Homer Simpson happening, yeah. so then I, t I call up Girth and I say, <laughs> maybe uh, slip me a little more egg whites, Girth. I see. So the very act of being clean shaven has required you uh, to lean into fitness a bit more. It has, yeah. yeah. I've had because you're out, you're basically out from behind your shadow at this point. Exactly. You're letting to see the real you. I've had to start reading for roles 15 years younger. <laughs> it's, a real, it's a real drag. Uh, <laughs> this is exactly, you wrote this book a couple years ago. This is the paperback version of this book for people who've been, you know, holding out for a better deal. That's right. Easier to carry. Uh, <laughs> And like half the and price. And by the way, if you, uh, you know, I would say, and when you go for, for your long walks, for you, when you go for your weeks in a national park, do you ever bring a, a book with you or you're someone that will read? Oh, because sure. that, you, don't, you never want to bring a, you know, a hardcover on a hike. No, it's true. Megan makes fun of me because when we go on trips, I pack invariably, I'm, I am dumb and donkey-like, and so I will, I'll, it doesn't matter. Whatever the book I want, if it's in hardcover, it's going in the suitcase. Yeah, yeah. So my bag ends up weighing 120 pounds, <laughs> and that's how I keep it trim. <laughs> Um, you took a hike, I, I, I was telling you backstage, this is before uh, Clean Shaven. Um, these are just two of my heroes. This is uh, uh, Jeff Tweedy, a uh, frontman uh, of Wilco, and George Saunders, as good uh, a writer uh, that we have living in America today. And these are friends of yours that you actually went, you went on a week vacation with them. We did, yeah. We um, invariably, in 2014, we all met each other in a triangulated way, two at a time. Yep. So three meetings of two each, and somehow we, Mother Nature brought us together and we fell in a peculiar bearded love tryst. <laughs> Which, I mean, you know, I, w with all due respect to my ego, I am, uh, I'm the little brother in the back seat of these guys Trans Am. Like, yeah. They are the coolest, two of the greatest poets and philosophers and just beautiful hearts. And so I'm so grateful to carry their luggage. Uh, <laughs> And, and uh, it was Jeff's idea. We were playing a show together in LA, and he said, 
what if we go walk somewhere pretty and, and you could like record the conversations for your book? And I said, thank you, Superman. I, I will uh, <laughs> take you up on your suggestion. This book makes a case for nature and makes a case that we sometimes, when people talk about Mother Nature, we actually put it farther away than it is and that we can be a little bit more in touch with it and realize how not a day goes by that we're not benefiting from those resources. It, it, it's true. I mean, uh, putting putting nature far away in a sort of national park sensibility, I think, is part of consumerism. It's part of what they sell us so that we forget that nature is right here. We're also nature. And most importantly, the food that we eat and who creates the food and provides the food that we eat. We've all been taught, me too, to, to lazily forget about, is this healthy? Where'd this come from? How was it produced? Is it good for, for the planet? Is it good for us? And so it's a huge conversation involving climate change, involving our natural resources, that I just want to humorously, you know, say things like girth and then be like, also, we're, who made the, your hamburger, you know? <laughs> was, was it grass-fed beef? There are ways to, to grow cows that are healthy for the planet and for us. And there are other ways that uh, most of us <laughs> use for, for fast food because they're industrial. You, um, first time I met you, uh, we were at the UCB Theater uh, downtown. You were telling monologues, and you were, I believe you had a, maybe in Red Hook, you, you were making your own canoe. My first canoe I built in Red Hook. And I, you were also the first person I'd ever met who was currently working on their own canoe. And, oh. uh, and you've continued to make canoes. That's right. And you recently, uh, uh, were, uh, you took a canoe out in the, uh, in the LA River. That's right. Which is not a place where people take canoes. <laughs> No, hence, the, I mean, I was on assignment for uh, Outside Magazine. Okay. I, I've been writing a, a column for them uh, for since, since the book came out uh, for a couple of years. And so we had this idea, uh, this next issue is going to be about makers. And I said, well, why don't I do an Outside Magazine thing with this canoe that I made? I don't know if you have one of those. <laughs> And so, actually, uh, our, our friend Morgan Sackett, who produced Parks and Rec and The Good Place, uh, he's paddling in the bow, and I'm in the stern, and we went down the LA River, and it was quite thrilling. That's very exciting, and if there was anyone I could pick to do it, it would have been you. Well, I appreciate it. Um, we're about uh, to wrap up here, and I know uh, because of uh, the current uh, sag after strike, we can't talk about your past work, uh, so I will on purpose be vague and mm. just say uh, you did a thing, you were in a thing with another person last year that was really special. And it was a thing that a lot of people told me to watch and they said, you're not gonna believe how good it is. And sometimes people raise your expectations too much to do a disservice to the work. And then I saw it and it was even better than everybody told me it would be wow. this thing that you did. <laughs> and you uh, continue to be good at uh, the things you do. And thank you so much for being here, man. I really what appreciate it. Thank you, sir. Nick Offerman, everybody. His current tour runs through the fall. He's a humorist, too. He'll be discussing where the deer and the antelope will play October 7th at First Congregational Church in LA with George Saunders. That's right. See you with George Saunders. We'll be right back with Siobhan Fallon.